Welcome, my peeps, my peoples. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the video. It'll be greatly appreciated from the bottom of my heart, my peeps, my peoples. I'm Mary Jane, and let's talk about Your Husband is Cheating on Us, Season 1, Episode 4. They're back in the building, and it seems like they want Deatria Hicks to follow them outside. She, They want her to make sure that she follows and that she stands with them. So do you think the actress should have followed the rest of the crew outside when they left rehearsal? What do you think? What is your take? Would you, do you think it's unprofessional? Or you think we stand together as a team and we do this together? How do you feel about that? And how do you feel about no one really sticking up for Deatra when, you know, um, JD's daughters was coming at her? So all of a sudden, now she's supposed to jump in. And last time she jumped in to try to help Christian, guess what happened? She ended up getting into it with, you know, um, Leah. And then that's when Genuine kind of claimed that he left because of the drama, but Genuine left because he couldn't remember his lines. I don't blame him. That's way too much for a dude like Genuine to be doing. So what do you guys think about that situation? What do you think about Jermaine playing Junior Ryan's role? And he doesn't feel up to it. He doesn't feel like he got it. He feels like, oh, it's abusive. It reminds him of his father. It's just not him. It's just so tumultuous. It's just not me. Like, what is going on? <laughs> you got to be able to act. Remember when Will Smith acted in one movie where he played a homosexual and, he, and it looked like he had sex with another man? Everybody believed that role so much that they assumed that um, Will, Will Smith was, you know, bisexual or gay this happened a couple of years years ago maybe 15 years ago i think this was a movie where he wasn't as popular as he is now so let's get on to the story so we got miss diatra hicks i'm gonna call her d so we got d she goes home to visit her parents and her daughter diamond picks her up and everything's all good and diamond and diatra or d are talking about like what's going on in the house and um you know diamond was just like i don't want you know anything to affect my relationship with anthony and getting to know Leah too as well and also you know Deatra also feels the same way too as well so she doesn't want her argument her bickering when working at the house come between their children knowing each other because you know their children are brother and sisters as they were saying so we get to Miss Deatra Hicks house and we find out that she had a hit single and she got an advance and you know what she did with her money she brought she brought she took her mother and her father out the hood out the ghetto and herself too as well brought a nice little house out there and um, it looks beautiful. So now you can see where her events went. That's so wonderful when you can see where, like, oh, where you, oh, you, you made all that money. What you do with it? You don't got nothing to show for it. Deatra Hicks has something to show for it, and that's that little nice house. And you can see that Deatra Hicks were raised correctly. Her mother and her father. Her mother was a manager. You know, they're very calm. They understand Deatra too. They tell the mom was telling Deatra, everybody's not gonna like you, but you can't get in other people's way and expect them not to get in your way. So the mother was schooling. The father was like, yeah, you just need to be nice. Like you need to work together and do this job. And Deatra Hicks feels so important that she has to get her career back on the road because her parents are older now and they're gonna need more help and more support. And so you see this side of Deatra that you that you really don't see in the house. You don't see her yelling and screaming. But when she came in that house and she took over her mother cooking the greens, that's just her personality. It's not like she's mad and she's not like she's evil. It's not like she wants to make you feel bad. But you see how she moved her mother right out the way to season up them um, collard greens because, you know, but that's, that's, that's just her personality. But everybody can't deal with it. So sometimes she's going to have to bag back her personality if she wants people to actually get her to as well. But... It sucks when you can't be yourself. <laughs> but you got to make that bread. You got to make that cheddar. So then we get Leah. Leah's talking to her son Anthony on the phone. And Anthony was Anthony said some real shit to his mother. He was like, listen, whatever drama that you and uh, what you and um, Deidre got on, got, Miss Deidre Hicks got going on, Miss Deatra Hicks got going on, don't, don't let it interfere in my relationship with Diamond. I was like, whoa. Like, he said some real shit to his mom. And also, Diamond said something real to Miss um, Deatra when he said, um, Deatra, when he said to her, um, Diamond said to her mom that, you know, um, Daddy told me that Leah can turn up. <laughs> I was like, oh, so Daddy's giving secrets now. Then we also find out that, you know, um, 
Diamond's father, Tony, he wasn't around in her life for 18 years. He felt like it would be better to get to know him when she was an adult so he wouldn't have to deal with the mother. Like, whoa, that's like, oh, that's low down, that's dirty, that's trashy. Like, what kind of person are you? That's why your face is blocked off in the picture. That you think, you know, some people think like this. You know, well, I'm not going to deal with my child until they're 18. No, you get into their life because the children need you as they're growing up. Them are the most sophisticated, the most um, groundbreaking um, moments in the child's life is growing up through growing up through childhood where they need the teachings the guidance and the structure and the love to actually become you know um beautiful adults so anyways miss me with that bullshit he said that because he didn't want to pay child support and he got caught so but it also gives like leeway to what lee is saying leah was saying that uh diatra was just you know a booty call then diatra said that he didn't want to see the child until he got 18 years old so he wouldn't have to deal with her or the baby's mama so i don't know what's going on with that situation sounds like there's two different stories going on whether tony was serious with diatra while he was married to leah and it seems like he was hitting them both off <laughs> like it ain't nobody's business so they have that conversation so everything's going good and then we get to, you know, Christian. Christian, at this time, she wants to move into her own room. So she wants to move into, you know, Genuine's old bedroom. You know, because she don't want to be around Miss Deatra Hicks, where she could probably learn something. Snoke up, soak up some more blackness, you know what I mean? So she moves to, you know, um, Genuine's room. And D is like, oh, well, you know what? She could move to his room. I don't care. You know, it's all good. She didn't even wash them sheets. She didn't wash the pillowcases. She didn't change the sheets. She just going to lay her funky ass in the bed. I, I added the funky ass at the end to it. But Deatra was correct. Like, yo, you ain't going to wash the sheets. You ain't going to change the sheets. You just going to go in there and lay on them bed sheets. I probably would lay on Junior Wise bed sheets. No, no, I won't because I don't. I, I, I'm. I, shit skis me out. You got to have clean sheets, clean pillowcases. It skis me out. So, moving on from that, so it ain't nothing. Deatra is like, she's cool. She's happy with the situation. She ain't got no problem. Bye. See you later. But she's still getting the cold shoulder from everybody. Nobody's really still trying to, you know, work with her or do anything with her. And so, you got JD. JD's doing his little, you know, sidebar. And he's talking about, like, you know, um, last time I had rehearsal with the guys, it was like fighting. The, it was like separating the bloods and the crips. I was like, JD, why are you talking about to staff that bad? so much and he also says that you know he don't want to see Deatra he don't want to see no tracks out he don't want to see no newly prints on nails he wants to see them together dressed <laughs> ready because now they're having a meeting and as they're having a meeting there's a big ass raccoon that's walking on the balcony I think you can see it I put like a little arrow on one of the photos in the, in the um, slideshow I was like yo I would not be living that raccoon was bigger than me son that was a huge raccoon <sighs> That shit scared the shit out of me seeing that raccoon. And then, so, um, <laughs> and so, you know, Jermaine, he's not really, he's not really up to being the Marvin part. He's just not feeling it. He just, he don't got it together. He don't want to study his line. He doesn't, re he want to rehearse. He kind of like doesn't want to be there anymore. He kind of wants to bounce too as well because he ain't seeing it. He ain't seeing the future. He ain't seeing it here. And, you know, having to start like genuine going there and remembering all his lines. But isn't that what an understudy does? Like, don't an understudy always want to take the lead of whoever they're understudying if something happens? Is, isn't that why they're the understudy? So why would you be an understudy for a role that you don't even want? Because eventually, don't you want to be the star? So now you got a chance to be the star and you ain't feeling this. Like, damn. But you got to be interested for TV. Jermaine has been very funny this episode. He's been telling jokes and he's been going in and I'm just feeling what he be saying. And so, you know, um, they, so they really, so they have the meeting. The meeting is basically about JD trying to get everybody together and them trying and what they want from JD, what JD want from them. But really, nothing's going on in the meeting. It's just like whatever. And um, after that meeting, they end up doing the tango. They go tango. Tandy goes tango. And Christian, she goes tango with JD. And, you know, it seems like they're having a good time. It's fun. And, you know, and that and that's when, you know, um, Tandy asks JD, hey, listen, won't you give up one of your characters, Alex, and let, you know, Junior Wine play that role, you know, let G play that role because he's good for it, is a romantic guy, is a Rico Suave type of dude, and that ain't you. And you already got a thousand roles, and Jermaine was like, I can't believe Jermaine, he's in, I mean, not Jermaine, JD, he's in his unconfessionals, and he's like, you know, um, 
she's gonna ask me to give up one of my characters. I I'm playing like eight, nine, ten. The nerve of her! I was just like, oh, <laughs> JD is too funny. And so, um, I don't know. I think um, JD does think about it, and it makes sense to have at least. If you're not gonna have genuine for the whole thing, at least having for at least something, because we need to start. Because this is like watching real world after forty. Um, so moving on from that. So hope so he's gonna give him that rose. So that's gonna be that's gonna be cool. And then we get Diamond. Diamond shows up to the house, and you know she wants to go over there and speak to Leah. And Leah was like, God no, she wants to come here to visit me. I haven't talked to her since she was like eight years old. I only seen her four times in my life, and she wants to. Okay, I, you know what? I'll, I'll do this bullshit for TV. I'll do this right now. But I'm adding on, not on. But Leah was like, okay, you know, it's not. And Leah was like, it's not my fault that I haven't had a relationship with her because you know. Um, she she says that, you know, D, um, Diatra, um, didn't let them have a relationship. She kept her away. She kept Diamond away from, you know, Leah. That's what Leah says. Who knows? So anyways, they have the conversation. They talk. And so Diamond was like, well, you know, I want you to talk to my mother. I want you guys to have a conversation, you know, work together, this and that. Could you do that for me? I really would appreciate it. So, you know, Leah being the nice person that she is, because I think Leah is a nice person. So Leah was like, you know what? It's for TV. You know, is a child. And she's building a relationship with, with her brother, Anthony. So, okay, let me do it. Then you go upstairs. You see Deatra Hicks. She's like, do you know Deatra ain't never dressed in that house? She ain't never ready. She ain't never got her hair done. Not, she ain't never dressed. And all of a sudden, she's dressed and ready for her daughter to come to the room. Because the daughter, when the daughter came into the house, Diamond... Diamond was like, oh, my mom doesn't know I'm here visiting you. Okay, I came to see you. And so she goes upstairs to get her mama. Mama's all laid out in her lime green, all dressed up and ready to go. I'm like, okay, that's too funny. So anyways, they have the conversation. And, you know, um, so they're talking and... You know, um, Leah feels like, yo, why are you hateful? Why are you jealous? Why are you trying to attack me? Why are you trying to come after me? Like, why do you do these things to me? It's so easy for you to attack me. It's so easy for you to betray me. It's so easy for you to do whatever negative towards me because you don't have no feelings for me. You don't, you don't care about me. Like, we ain't building nothing. And like, well, why are you like that? Why are you doing that? You're still holding on to some grief, some anger. You're still bitter about the situation. And so that's when Deatra was like, yo, listen, I'm not bitter about the situation at all. I don't feel that kind of way. I'm not bitter. I'm not hurt. I, I, I let it go. Like, I'm trying to move on. I'm trying to move forward. I'm trying to do this job with you. I don't feel no type of way about you. I let that shit go in the past. So, but, you know, um, Leah actually said in her confessional that, you know, Deatra was only a side piece. Like, I don't know why you're holding on to... To, to this situation, he was only his side girlfriend, you know what I mean, so it seems like um, Leah hasn't accepted that her husband at the time was, you know, was with Deatra, like that was his girlfriend, that was his woman at one point in time, like she hasn't accepted some of this shit either, because you want to live that fairy tale life, especially she remembers back when she was so happy when she married Anthony and was together, and she remembers that joyful, wonderful feeling, she also remembers that feeling when she found out that he was sleeping, and had a baby, with, you know, Miss Deatra, you know, so them emotions are still there. Sometimes you really have to work out them emotions because if you don't work them out, they come up and you don't even know. So you you slip and say shit. So she slipped and she said, "Oh, he's just she was just his side piece. She can't accept that that was actually her husband's other woman, for real, for real, that he had a baby with." So let's moving on from that. So they make up, they're all good, and so next day they go to the laundry mat, and that's when you know, um, what is her name? Um, Leah. Leah goes to the laundromat. She goes to the laundromat with Christian and, you know, Jermaine and actually talks to them and say, hey, listen, you know, I'm I'm trying to get everything going on with, you know, Miss Deatra Hicks. We're trying to solve things. Her daughter D Diamond came in the situation. Let's try to give her another chance. Let's try to work with her. Let's try to do this. Let's try to do that. And so Jermaine was like, oh my God, that's just asking me, that's like asking me to drink bleach and then chase it, <laughs> chase it with cyanide or chase it with, <laughs> with some other point and I was just like, oh no, and um, and Jermaine and his little confessionals are really funny too as well. And so, um, Leah was like, I just want to give her a shot. I just want to give her a chance, you know, um, and all this other stuff. Basically, so the game, so Tandy doesn't really want to. Oh, no, Christian wasn't there. Tandy doesn't really want to because Christian, she'll go either way. She'll follow anybody. So they didn't really need to have a conversation with her because she's a follower of the group. So. 
Um, they was like, okay, yeah, we'll do this. We'll, we'll, we'll make up with her. We'll, we'll just we'll just be cool. So they had a meeting. They all talked about it. They got each other's back. They're going to stand together as a team. They're going to make this play come together as a team and all this other stuff. And they're going to support each other. But that did not say that we were going... When they had that group meeting, they did not say that they were going to... You know, they said there was going to be cohesive they're going to work as a group as a team but that doesn't mean that if someone walks off the job that i'm going to walk off the job because you have people that are in a union when they decide to strike there's some people that still go to work and there's some people that don't want to strike and there's some people that do strike so that was an end of description where it was like we we're going to work at a team and we're going to rehearse we're going to get this play out i'm going to get this play going and we're going to move forward and make this play be successful but it didn't say that i'm going to walk off the job so but if if, you know, the actor wanted to, you know, show that she's cohesive, that she's down for the cause, and if any questions they did have, she could have walked out with them and been with them to show that, you know, that she's supporting them, she's supporting their decision, but she really doesn't, so why would she? But if you want to play nice, I guess you play nice with the boss and you play nice with the team. So she could have said, J.D., you know, I'm going to walk out with the team. You know, I'm going to leave with her so just um, just see what's going on and we'll pick this up another day. Or she could have stayed there with J.D. But anyway, she made her own choice. Her choice was to stay on stage with J.D. and rehearse. And I don't fault her for, her for that. And I don't think she's wrong for that at all. But they're trying to make it seem like she's a bad person. She's no good. That she's two faces and she's fake because she didn't walk off the stage with them so you know rehearsal so anyways so all that situation is good I re everything is going well and so now we get to the rehearsal once we get to the rehearsal you know one of the daughters i don't know which one bitch and bitch at um started to talk about you know my father really appreciates this my father believes you know, that's why he will have you here time after time working with you and what she was saying wasn't even like it wasn't sobering it wasn't it wasn't humble it wasn't encouragement it wasn't positive what she was saying in general and then she was like oh i'm looking at you christian the way you looking at me the way you looking down then christian was like what are you talking about i'm trying to let the situation go yeah you attacked me your sister attacked me and i didn't want to bring this up and talk about this and that's when tandy jumps and tandy was like and then it um, JD's assistant, she jumps in and she's defending JD's daughter. And she was like, yo, she's talking about, she's telling you to do this and do that. Not, she's not asking you to do this. And that's when Tandy was like, why you keep jumping in? Why you keep stirring the pot, basically? And Tandy was like, I ain't got time for this. Blase in the third, this and that. Like, yo, I'm leaving. She walks off. Before she can leave, you know, um, Leah is yelling. She was like, y'all shut up. Stop it. Stop it. I just want to rehearse. This is dumb. This is dumb. And DJ was just watching. And so then, you know, Leah leaves then you know um but before then i believe tandy left and then everybody else followed and you know um deatra hicks miss deatra miss deatra hicks she stayed and she rehearsed like a professional because she said this is her last chance she don't know if she's gonna be on tv again and you know deatra is fighting between two worlds she's fighting that world that she wants to continue to be in the star a star and she's fighting that world that world of giving up because she's in both hells and she's she's like living both different dimensions of giving up and trying to move forward and she's fighting every last breath that she has every last breath she can take she's trying to fight to get past everything else that's pulling her back to go into a little small cage and be by herself but it was funny when Deatra was like, y'all, I'm looking at them stairs. I don't know what I'm going to do. She's, I'm just looking at them. She started running up some stairs. She gets some stairs. And she has them hot flashes. And she's like, pass out on the bed, running up them stairs. I know, them are mad stairs. Because she's like on the third floor, right? Miss um, Deatra is on the third floor, right? <laughs> so... You know, um, JD, he feels a certain type of, he don't know what to do with this situation. So what's going on with the two sisters? Did the two sisters, you know, have sex with Christian? Did Christian still one of their boyfriends? Did one of them have sex or have a relationship with Christian? Did Christian sleep with their father? Because the animosity and the hate that they have towards and the disdain they have towards Christian. If Christian wasn't there, everything would be golden. So what is it? Do they really feel betrayed by her, you know? Because supposedly they grew up as a, you know, a couple of years, you know, JD was like her stepfather, so what what went on with that situation? That shit sounds crazy. How they really just mad at each other, and so you know the gang are getting together. They're having lunch and they're talking about the actress that she's fake, she's not real, she's not cool. Like yo, she didn't even step out with us. I told you, I told you, I told you, I told you. It's like yo, what are you saying? Like she didn't want to walk out. Like you can't blame her for that. But if she wanted to show that she was cohesive and she was down with the call, she could have walked out for you. But she's not a child either. She's not a follower. 
before. And you guys just talked about making up as working together. So anyways, so they all feel in a certain type of way. Deatra's still at practice. And then after they leave the restaurant eating, they get home. They're waiting for Deatra to come through. Deatra comes through. And when she comes through, you know, they're like, oh, so what happened? So how was it? Christian is leading the, the charge. And then Tandy's leading the charge too as well. And she was like, well, I didn't think walking out was appropriate. Like, that's unprofessional. You never walk off. And you never leave your job. You never do that. You know, I thought you guys went downstairs and was going to come back. I didn't know you guys were totally leaving. That wasn't a part of the deal. I don't, I would never, I want the play to go on i want to rehearse i need rehearse why would i do that so they're not hearing it christian's not hearing it tandy's not hearing it and um jd i mean and jermaine's not hearing it too as well they're like no you're fake you're phony we let you in you didn't you you you, you just you just let us down and blase they don't want to deal with her no more but actually leah agrees with you know um Miss D, Miss Diatra, D Diatra Hicks, <laughs> Diatra. <laughs> I just like saying that. Um, um, she agrees with her. She agrees, but there's no reason, there's no way you should ever leave the stage or ever walk out. Like that's very unprofessional, and they need to practice. So we'll see what happens. You know what's going to go on next. I'm just like, damn. And it seems like Leah and Diatra or D are actually going to um Diatra are actually going to be like cool. It seems like they might make up. It seems they might have something going on because she actually agrees with her. So is Leah gonna step out on a limb and say, Hey, listen guys, don't be mad at D because you know she had the right to feel that way and what we did was unprofessional. Because so, it seems like Leah is the leader of the group and Leah was a good person to actually go to the guys and say, Hey, listen, after she talked to after Leah had the meeting with Diamond and, and D she actually went to go talk to the gang and have them forgive her and work along with D Diatra. So you know, so I think is I think they might have something building up. Peace, I'm out one love.